Hi, I'm John with the Fossil Channel, and today I'm going to be going over a homemade ham radio go bag, and I'm going to explain what kind of radios I have in there and what kind of devices I use uh, with it, and why it works for me and how it could work for you. Uh, starting off here, we have a VanQuest Mobius 2.0 uh, sling over the shoulder bag. Uh, this is an essential part of the kit, obviously, because it houses the three ham radio units that I have in the bag and the accessories that go with it. Uh, I chose this because part of my requirements were to have a go bag where I could wear it hiking or camping and take it on long treks. So uh, I was going to use something like a Pelican case or some kind of hard case set up, but then I realized I wanted to have a more of a flexible system being that I would be on foot quite a lot and I want to be able to theoretically take this thing and get up and go and operate uh, whenever I needed to without having to carry a huge hard case. Uh, having a bag just seems much more lighter and much more flexible in that sense and regard. So I'll start out with the uh, unit here on the outer parts so you can see what I have in the uh, case here. So starting with the top part here, there's a compartment and in that compartment is a couple cables. I have some SMA to um, PL259 connectors. I have an SMA to BNC connector in this bag here. Uh, just a little bit jumper pigtail cables just for my HTs in case I needed them. I have a USB to micro USB uh, wire here which comes in handy when I'm charging banks or just uh, normal everyday things. Uh, I have a skull tool Leatherman. So this is a good little component to have in a kit because you never know when you need a little multi-tool to fix something or take apart something uh, with the kit here. So that's kind of nice to have in your kit. I required that. I have some Velcro uh, ties, which come in handy for uh, just basically tying down certain things without breaking it or whatnot so pretty good to have in the kit here um, then I have a headphones pair of headphones stereo headphones which is good for silent monitoring I do have some uh, radios that output to stereo uh, I have a copy of my license in here so I can prove that I'm a ham radio operator and then in this bag here I have a whole bunch of different type of connectors. I have a coupler, a PL259 coupler here. I have a uh, dipole modification right here for my HS stuff. If I needed a backup one, I could easily do, you know, plus and minus BNC connector and make a quick uh, dipole out of something real quick. And then I have uh, a uh, BNC to 250, uh, PL259 connector and then I have BNC to right angle BNC connector and then I have a coupler for BNC's so uh, all that in my uh, bag here oh and one more thing I have a SMA to BNC adapter in the bag here so that that's another uh, adapter that fits specifically for my Yaesu radios which I have three of them in the, in the uh, bag here so that's the front pouch um, I'll put these to the side here so we have some room to show the other things in the bag Okay, well, close that up. Uh, starting on the top also, uh, the main compartment here, it's like a little pouch. It's great for putting things, soft things into, and I usually keep a uh, flashlight in the top because uh, sometimes you need to access uh, pretty quickly uh, certain things. I usually lock it out by rotating the cap out so I don't accidentally turn on the light, but um, I'll show you. It's on low right now, but this thing get pretty bright, so. So it's a little one AA flashlight. It's a Manker uh, T01. I had it for a few years. Works decently. It's a good thrower. Uh, it takes. I have one end loop battery in there, nickel metal hydride. So that's what I have. Um, just easy access to make sure I, I can see at the moment when I, whatever I'm doing. And uh, the other thing that I have in here is a two liter. Uh, bag, dry bag, uh, ultra sil nylon by Sea to Summit. Uh, I keep that in there in case I want to throw anything. I want to keep from getting wet or just another organizational 
uh, bag to have out in the field. Uh, so that's the top two front pockets. Everything else is empty. Um, these pockets are pretty good. The bag itself is made out of 800 Cordura, I, I believe, for what I remember anyway. Um, so it opens up the main latch here and you get access to the main compartment here, which has a little zip tie thing, which, which is waterproof, which is kind of nice if it's raining or it's wet out, you want to keep your gear kind of dry. Uh, in the main compartment, um, I don't know if you can be able to see inside there, but I have the 817 in there. And there's a pocket here, which I keep a lot of cables. I'll pull everything out for you so you can see what's going on. Um, on the bottom, I keep a uh, solar panel. Uh, this is the Powerfilm 10 watt solar panel. And what it looks like when you deploy it, this is part of my recharging kit with the... Uh, Pack here, I'll open it up so you can see. That is my 10 watt flexible power film solar panel. And that outputs, uh, I think it's like 15.2 volts at 500 milliamps or 600 milliamps. I don't remember exactly, but when you put a load on it, it's a little bit less than that, obviously. So I can charge my, uh, here, read it on, on here, uh, 0.6 amps by 15.4 volts. So that's how much it outputs. When I put it on the load, I charge up another battery I have in here, and I'll show you in a bit. Um, and it comes with a, uh, a variety of different connectors that I've made. I have those in the main pouch as well. So this is the solar panel which I use to charge uh, my battery unit, which then charges the internal battery on my 817. So I'll put this aside, this power film solar panel, and we'll get to the other battery bank that I use as well. I have two of them in here. And this is the iSun battery pack. Um, this houses and maintains charge of AA batteries, but in addition to doing that, on the uh, output side here, you have a 12 volt output regulated. So this is very nice to plug in like those DC car adapters into your ham radios and charge the radio potentially and run the radio at the same time. Uh, I have end loop batteries in here that are 1900 milliamp hour, so you get about you know, decent one hour or two hour runtime if you're transmitting at a full five watts talking and receiving. Uh, receiving only, you get a little bit longer runtime. And here's the DC input ports for charging. And this is an older accessory port for another uh, proprietary solar system that charges with this unit. Uh, I got this on eBay for like 20 bucks from a seller. It was a good seller. Uh, sold several of them to me and my family. And, um, you know, it's just it just holds up pretty well. Uh, over time, uh, but that's all I can pretty much say about it. It charges my double A's, which is nice. Uh, it's very useful for that. So that's the uh, other battery bank that I have in there. Um, I'll show you the other one in a moment. Going through the main compartment, uh, there's a flap in the front, which houses uh, my extra antennas that I have. Uh, I have a, just like a Chinese SMA Nagoya uh, dual band 70 centimeter, two meter antenna in there. And then I have a uh, Diamond RH707. Uh, this is a dual band, 2 meter, 70 centimeter antenna as well. Um, and the different thing about this is that it has a bendable uh, antenna, so you can change the uh, direction of your emissions. So I have two of those antennas in here, which I can change off. One's SMA and one is B and C. So that's important because I want to update or modify my HTs or even the radio inside. Uh, this is a uh, cable LMR Ultraflex uh, 400. Uh, it's being bent really awkwardly right now, I realize, but that's really to fit into the case. Normally, you don't want to bend these cables as much as possible to you know, get the longevity out of it. But this is LMR 400 Ultraflex. It's about a foot long, made by uh, MPD Digital uh, on eBay. Uh, you can find them for various prices. Uh, I don't remember how much I got this for. Uh, I also have a PL259 to uh, BNC connector on this as well, just so I have an extra connector. It's kind of with the cable right now. And then I have a Velcro tie around it, as you can see, and a little bit extra. So that's the LMR 400 Ultraflex cable, jumper cable. And then further down into the pocket, I have one more cable too. This is a LMR 240 Ultraflex. So I have the 400 and the 200, 240. So this one's a little bit easier to work with when you're out in the field. Uh, sometimes when I'm hiking or camping, 
it's a little bit easier to carry thinner cable. You, you sure you lose a couple decibels and you don't get as good quality, but uh, you got to make compromises sometimes, and this is one of the compromises that I made. Um, but really often I use this cable a little bit more than the 400. The 400 seems pretty uh, hard to work with sometimes, even though it's ultra flex. So that's the uh, side pouch in the main compartment. Uh, I'm going to pull out the radio here and I'm going to show you what the radio is. This is a Yaesu VX, uh, not VX, this is an 817 uh, transceiver. So this is an all mode, uh, I believe it's 2 meter, 6 meter, 7 centimeters, 70 centimeters. Um, and then you got HF. Uh, I can't remember all the bands on it, but I'm usually on 20 meters with this one. And I have a uh, uh, four state QRP tuner uh, to my right off camera. I use that for uh, 40 meters as well. Um, this unit works very well. It's great for being a portable little unit. Uh, it's good for QRP. I got to re-glue one of my little feet on here. It came off because of the heat in the summer when I was using it out in the, on the mountains for someone on the air. Um, it got, it got pretty hot, so I melted off the uh, adhesive on one of the little legs here. But uh, radio is great radio. I have a elbow, uh, Amphenol elbow connector here, PL259 uh, interconnect. And then I have a LMR240 connector on the rear here. And then there's a guy on eBay uh, for my radio. He, he makes specific uh, molds, and one of the molds he made for, is for the 817. It's for the power to be inserted into the back here. Um, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but in the back here, uh, this port on the inside of the 817 sometimes will break or get or get worn down, or it just won't function if you keep inserting uh, power plugs in and out of it. Um, so what what I did was I bought a mold and it fit nicely on the back here, and it turns into an Anderson power pole connector, and then from the power pole connector, uh, I simply soldered a cable to a DC connector cable which then comes out. So it makes the system very modular and it pits the strain on the cable here, which I can easily replace instead of uh, wearing out this. Um, so this cable here came with uh, you know, a basic DC multi-plug pack that I got on Amazon. And this cable fits perfectly with uh, the other battery that I use for this radio. So that is the 817. I'll take that out of here. And um, let's see what else. Yeah, yes, I have some extra connectors, uh, again, for the solar panel. Uh, it's using um, marine type connectors. So this is a little uh, adapter that would fit onto, uh, here, I'll show you. So this would plug into, I forget which type of adapter that this is. I think it's like a marine or something or whatever but fits in nice and securely. It's uh, weather sealed there. And from here, you can plug into the radio uh, female end, and then you got solar parallel directly to the radio, but I don't do that with the 817. I don't want to put 15.4 volts into it directly. So what I do is I either charge up my uh, main battery here, or I have another battery in the compartment here. This is the secondary, or rather the primary battery. So I'll plug this in to my Energizer lithium polymer um, battery. And this is an 8,000 milliamp battery at five volts. Uh, it outputs up to 19 to 20, or 20 volts rather. So 16 to 20 volt output. Uh, input is gonna be 19 volts. So this can, this can handle a wide range of tolerances and has a secondary output of 9 volts to 12 volts. And that's the output that I use to plug into the Yaesu VX, uh, Yaesu 817. So that's how I charge it. And this is kind of the floating system, which I use. On a sunny day, I can get about, well, I've been out there for about four to five hours. And if I use like 500 milliwatts of power on transmission, I can be out there for even longer on a sunny day. So this, this works for my needs out in the field, in the sun. And you know that might not work for you and might not work for most other people, but it works for my needs and I've made contacts around the world or at least very close anyway, um, you know, with lower power. So 
that is the charging system for which I use the 817. Now, the other cables I have are just simply other adapters, like I have a 9 volt adapter so I can run uh, my radios directly off the solar panel, and there's some radios uh, that I can run. My Yaesu FT1D, I've run it with this plugged in directly to the solar panel and through a, another uh, adapter that I have, and I've basically ran the unit uh, off the sunlight and transmitted at 500 milliwatts off solar panel just directly to, into the battery. So that's quite amazing. Uh, I like that solar panel, the power film. Uh, 10 watt solar charger is definitely worth the buy if you're looking for a decent solar panel. Uh, and further in the left pocket here is that I have the adapters for my different um, ba different battery adapters for my radios. I have a VX8DR, which I'll show you shortly. Uh, these are the batteries for it. I have the uh, I forget which one. This is the FBA not 23, but FBA 39. This is a three uh, AA battery case so you you know exchange that for the lithium ion and then I have a smaller uh, 100 that 1100 milliamp uh, 7.4 volt battery here as an extra battery for my ATR and that is what's in the left pocket on the left side I kind of jumped ahead here but uh, on the internal pocket I still have some cables here or rather wire this is a six meter uh, dipole measured cable. I have a uh, hiking pole, which I'll review later on, uh, that goes with this. And, and the top part, it's made out of a PVC pipe, plumbing pipe. The top end cap has a little drilled hole in it, and this would fit in one side, and this would fit in the other, and then, uh, you know, it comes out to a nice dipole, and it's these are the ends of it. And it works very well for six meters. Uh, I believe this is uh, 14 gauge wire, so I have a wide bandwidth on the uh, six meter band. I uh, can't remember exactly where I put it and it's been a while. So, but it's got a nice bandwidth of her phono and um, Morse code if I wanted to do that. So that's my six meter dipole wire. And further in, I'm trying to see what else I have here. Uh, all right, so moving on to the second pocket and the uh, secondary pouch. What I like about um, the Bulbius 2.0 is that it opens up fairly nicely to reveal almost everything that easy access. So this little flap main compartment here is done well, very well, nicely. Uh, in the secondary compartment, I have, I believe this is 10 feet of uh, Elmore 240. So I use this as my main uh, floating, my main connector for my radio. And then in here I have uh, a 20 meter dipole setup. Uh, so this is a, a Unidol antenna, MFG, W2A, W2AU uh, insulator. So I, I've used this. I've made contacts in 20 meters with the 20 meter dipole. The wiring, I forget, some DX brand uh, wiring here. I think it's like 22 gauge or 20 gauge. Uh, I can't remember exactly. But it, it has a fairly wide bandwidth on 20 meters. I think about 150 hertz of SWR about 1.2 to 1.3 so it's not the best but it does get out and it, it works for my needs and it's super super lightweight so it's it's fairly good wiring um, it's it's rugged enough for the outdoor use I used to have a thicker uh, 12 gauge um, homemade um, dipole uh, with PVC pipe and that was you know a lot heavier but it was a, lot, a little bit better for the uh, 20 meter range but anyway that's my uh, 20 meter dipole and the Elmar 240 cable that goes with it and in here I have a uh, J-pole uh, it's made by I think NTF something or I don't remember the exact name on uh, eBay but that's where I got it from for about 30 bucks so it's a 2 meter 7 centimeter uh, J-pole with a PL259 uh, connector here. So I use that to string up as a antenna in the trees as a backup. Uh, you know, in case of an emergency, you want to be discreet, you can use this and it'll uh, be pretty uh, discreet up in the trees there. And underneath here, I just have uh, power cord 
and extra quarters for stringing up the uh, antennas. So that's the secondary pocket, which holds my antennas. And nope, there's nothing else in here. So the main and the secondary compartment are done. Uh, we went over the battery compartment on the right here, but we haven't gone over the other radios. Uh, in here on this side, I have a Yesu VX8DR with the mic modification, or not modification, but the mic accessory and the GPS unit with it. So what this does, this is a quad band. It has a JTH2 Jetstream tri-bander antenna. Uh, you're looking at 146, uh, 224, and uh, 70 centimeter, uh, or 440, uh, with this tri-band uh, antenna. So this is a quad band enabled radio. So in addition to those three bands, it does uh, 1.25 meters, which is two, um, not, uh, sorry, six meters. <laughs> I went over with, uh, we already covered a 220. But it's a great radio. Uh, it functions just like the FT-1D. Uh, some exceptions is that it takes a little while longer with the older GPS module to lock on. But it does APRS beaconing and, and receiving. Uh, you can send text messages, emails with this one. It uh, has the same interface where you can see uh, you know, where the other stations are. It shows a little compass and, a, and how far um, that station is. Right now it's being blank because it's locking on to uh, uh, GPS satellites right now. But once it locks in, uh, you can track state different stations and whatnot. What I like about this radio, though, that's a little bit different than FT-1D, is that it's uh, IPX rated for uh, IPX7 rated. So you can submerge this. It even says it in the front, obviously. Uh, and it's pretty rugged. It's pretty, pretty uh, knockproof. I've dropped this before and it still maintains its working order. I just locked into my uh, GPS here and I just transmitted it out. Um, so there's my call sign and there's a whole bunch of other ones that I've used in the past. Not used, but received. So it functions just like the FT-1D, where you can kind of see everything, and then it's straightforward. Uh, what I like about this is that um, it functions as a sort of mini, like I, ha I have all the bands covered in, in the bag for FM that I like to use. I don't have 1.2 gigahertz, unfortunately, uh, or 900 megahertz band. But what I like about this radio is that it's, it's I can take it out in the field not worry about the rain. Um, I can use it as a APRS beaconing system, which is essential and, and part of my kit. Uh, when I'm doing uh, some, someone on the air, I can beacon this out and they'll know where I am on uh, my position or in an emergency situation. It's always good to have an APRS beaconing uh, system so you can pop up on the map for others to identify and locate you if, you, if, you can, if you're looking to do that. Um, this is a SMA, uh, uh, type connector on these radios. So you gotta have either SMA uh, antennas or an SMA to B and C type adapter or another adapter uh, to convert to use other antennas. Now I have another Jetstream uh, JTH uh, antenna on here as well, just as an extra precaution in case uh, this one breaks or something, or I need an extra antenna for the other radio. So that is the Yesu 8DR. Um, I don't want to go too much in depth with it, but uh, I have the both, as you saw, both battery uh, units. I have the backup battery lithium ion for this one, and I have the uh, AA adapter, which enables me to be on the air indefinitely with my charging systems. So that is the 8DR. I'll put this back in the pocket here. And we'll go over the other pocket, and we'll show you the other radio that I'm using right now. And this is uh, a Yesu VX1R. And this is a really old radio, but it's a dual bander. And it does two meter and 70 centimeters. And on here, I have a dual band little mini antenna. Uh, it's 146 to 446. Uh, it's a JTH524SMA. So it's, uh, this is the SMA adapter variant. And it's a great little radio. And uh, I, I like this one for just monitoring. If I want to say, battery power uh, I can just simply put this on and what I like about it and I'll show you on this other pocket here turn this off for a second in my other pocket I have some adapters 
uh, for powering and charging my radios. Uh, you won't believe it, or, but this radio can be charged either DC in with the wall adapter or I bought a plug on eBay straight out, 5 volts to DC, and you can plug it in here and charge up the battery. Now, I haven't noticed any damage occurring with this radio in my past few years of using this uh, style of uh, charging, but uh, it seems to work fairly well, and you can run this off a of USB power. I don't have a battery, uh, I do have a battery bank, hang on. Let's see, I'll just show you real quick how this works here. Uh, this battery bank that I have, the main one, has a USB out as well, so I can plug that in, turn that on, and the radio will run right off of the uh, lithium ion battery. And it doesn't affect reception as much as the other uh, adapters that I have in here for charging. So I can be listening and charging, and I can be listening and talking with the other radio. So that is the VX1R and why I have it in the system here is that it's very small, very quick to hand out to another ham operator in case they don't have a radio or the radio doesn't work right. So I can have a all the bands covered on FM that, that I like to use and this is just sort of like a redundancy extra thing to have in case the radio doesn't work and I still got another dual band radio to use. Uh, what's nice about it, I, I might give this to another friend or family member and they can go out walking and I can still talk to them through here or on the 817. So I have a, a, a different tier set up for different radios to use. One does a, a different variety of uh, transmissions and bands and powers. This one uh, I think does 1.5 watts maximum transmission. Um, I'm only using it for close range or if I'm on a mountain I can get out pretty far with this radio. So um, I don't remember the exact wattage specs on this but the other one it does full 5 watts out much like the 817. Uh, I forget if it does, I don't think it does full 5 watts on the 220, I think it's like 500 or 300 milliwatts, and I think 6 meters is 2 watts on for the 8DR. Uh, I don't remember exactly on, on those, but uh, for this one, it, I use this far more, and I don't use the 6 meter band as much. Um, I do have uh, other adapters and antennas for that. So that's the VX1R, very... Uh, very useful small portable radio. I have it attached with this little lanyard here and the little clip so I don't drop it out of the bag accidentally. So that's what, what's in the second side pouch. Um, I brought out this adapter. This is for charging the uh, VX8DR and I showed this in my other video I think with the VX7R and I usually had the VX7R with me and what's nice about this adapter even though it, it sometimes works if you have the right uh, amperage going through it uh, it takes 5 volts and converts it to 12 volts. And then from this port, you stick it into the charging DC input of the 8DR or my VX7R, and it charges it very nicely, uh, depending on how much power you have in your bank or wherever you're getting your power from on, via USB. You can charge it up anywhere from an hour to about two hours. So it, it does an, a great job of charging. The only downfall with this is that this uh, internal box here the components it emits a high, a high amount of RFI, which uh, renders anything that you're trying to use uh, transmission-wise, receiving-wise with the radios, uh, you can't hear anything. It just interferes so much. So this is only good for charging when you're not using any of the radios. Uh, you can find these for like $6.99 on eBay. They come from China. So they're not the most well-made uh, piece of equipment, and but it does get the job done. Um, and it does work and it is reliable to a certain degree. So as long as you know that, uh, these work fairly well uh, uh, on the radios and that's why I have it in the kit. So that is my charging setup for charging the lithium ion batteries in the kit. Uh, if I want to keep using maximum output power instead of using double A's, I'll be using that. So further down into the case here, uh, we've got the last bag inside the case. And I have a whole bunch of stuff in here. I'm just going to get it out. Um, as you can see, I have another Anderson power pole adapter. And this one's for connecting uh, inputs to uh, the VX ATR and whatnot. So I have an adapter here. I just keep that in here as a backup if I want to rewire something. Then I have a, uh, a traditional uh, adapter for that other cable. 
which I can convert that cable into a DC input for um, my VX uh, 8DR and the VX 7R here. Further into the, into the bag, I have a an adapter, 12 volt adapter um, input, uh, and this one's a modular one that I, that I built many years ago. Uh, I got this from Radio Shack uh, a very long time ago. It's got a uh, fuse in the circuitry, which is nice. Then I adapted some cables into a female ended DC input, so I can swap cables in case they break. And this is one of the cables that I use. Um, it's a little jumbled right now because I had to fit in the pocket, but uh, you know, you plug this side in, and then you can plug this into either the uh, Yesu uh, 817 or my 8DR or my VX7 or even the FT1D. Now, with this setup, I've, I've run this directly into um, the solar panel with the with the uh, correct uh, nine volt socket adapter and 12 volt socket adapter, and I've run it directly off the uh, solar panel. So this enables me to u utilize any kind of uh, 12 volt socket powering options while out in the field. So that's why I keep it in the bag with me. Uh, very useful. Um, Further in the bag, I have a USB uh, 12 volt to your dual USB output because sometimes I might need to charge my cell phone or other USB powered devices. Even um, even the little one X, uh, VX1R, I can run that from this and charge it up. And it's just useful to have something like this and more adds more flexibility to my kit. Further in, I have a SoulShine. Uh, smart charger, uh, universal smart charger. It's a lithium ion nickel metal hydride type charger, single bay, and the slide adapts to different sizes of batteries up to uh, 18650 batteries. Usually when I'm out with this bag, this kit, I usually have some sort of lithium ion battery on me and I usually have a uh, nickel metal hydride battery as well. As you've seen previous with that flashlight that I have, it uses one AA battery and this is the charger for it. And this works either with a DC input or with a regular USB input cable. This is a, a mini, not a micro, but a mini USB uh, cable. So I can charge this off of the battery here if I wanted to. Uh, we'll turn this back on real quick. I'll show you. So that'll light up. And this is a smart charger, so it'll give you a, a visual indication of how your battery is doing, and it'll attempt to... Um, properly cycle the battery. Uh, how good is this? This unit works pretty decently. Uh, I haven't had any real mishaps in, in the years that I've been using it and the batteries that I've been using with it. Uh, it won't be able to fix every battery, but it will be able to charge most batteries. So it's a flexible piece of kit. Um, I do have another uh, type of charger. It's um, made by, I uh, can't think of their name, Olight. And it's a magnetically uh, USB charger does lithium ion and uh, nickel metal hydride and what that one does I don't have in the kit here but it's basically two pieces of wire that have metal caps uh, magnetic metal caps on the either end and it has a USB cable on the other side and it has a little smart chip in the center and you don't get a digital readout with it but it'll charge up lithium ion and nickel metal hydride batteries it's definitely a better option for this kit but for now I'm working with this and this is this is more than sufficient enough for what I use out in the field and then I have uh, another backup uh, USB to micro USB cable in here. Uh, I even had, at one point, had thought about putting my old iPhone 4 in the kit so I'd have some sort of smart device that could use utilize GPS tracking. And this was the uh, uh, adapter for it. So you can plug it in. And then this is a little up converter uh, for amperage uh, USB up converter. So that, that is the kit in a nutshell. Oh, and before I forget, I have a few, two more items in here, or two or three more. So that is the main three compartments in the bag. The battery compartment, the uh, wiring compartment for the batteries, and the radio housing. Uh, on the back of the bag, or rather, before we get to the back, I have two mini slots in the sling here. Uh, on the side, you have a little slot to put in various pens and whatnot, but I have a uh, MMP Shield uh, AAA light, which is very handy, and it's a pen too as well, 
Um, this I find this very useful for when I'm writing. Uh, it's also got a uh, laser point, so I don't know if you can see that. So it's very handy uh, for writing, and it's got refillable um, ink cartridges which you can buy. So it's a uh, just the kind of uh, pen that I wanted. It was a tactical pen I got. I think I got it for like 20 bucks last year. Um, it's a decent light. Um, I modified it with a uh, plumbing tape on the turning switch. Uh, the threads get a little loose, so I added some resistance. And now it's you know kind of a full functioning, uh, resilient pen. And then on the other pocket, I'm not sure if you saw this before, but I just have a little regular pen on the side here too. So put that back in and I'll slide that back in here. So I have a mini flashlight uh, redundancy uh, to access in the bag here, which is what I like to keep. And this doesn't add too much weight to the bag. So those are the pens that I use for writing, logging in my uh, stations on Summit on the Air. This is the back of the uh, Mobius 2.0 bag. And in the back I keep two sets of writing pads. I have a regular cheapo writing pad and then I have um, my write in the rain anywhere writing pad which is pretty good. It comes with measuring um, measurements on the side so I can do a little bit of measuring. Um, it gives me a whole bunch of other uh, useful things on a card here. Um, and I did a little test writing up here uh, with the Schmidt 900 refillable ink. So this is a really useful uh, piece of equipment. Most people, uh, if they work outdoors, they tend to get something like an all weather right in the rain type of uh, pad here. And that's the essential part of my kit. Because, you know, what's the point of having a ham radio if you can't log in information? I mean, there's a point to it, but I use that for someone on the air. So it fits nicely in the back rear compartment. Uh, this compartment really is for like a concealed carry type uh, usage for like your, your firearms and whatnot. Um, but I utilize it as a, uh, as a document holder. So that is the whole entire kit for the uh, Hammer Radio Go Bag that I have. Now that I've deconstructed the whole kit for you, you kind of see how much flatter the bag is. It's not so bulky and big. Um, overall weight for the bag is, I believe, anywhere from 12 to 15 pounds, depending on the loadout that I use for it. So that's quite heavy uh, to carry, um, but it is manageable. And the fact that it's a bag means, uh, you know, it's pretty flexible and most of it's easily accessible, which is the main thing with a go bag that I like. Uh, I want to be able to access my equipment fairly easily and switch out radios and change batteries if I have to. So it's not uh, that bad if, it, if it's at that weight, it can easily drop out you know, one of the extra battery banks and it'll still function well and I'll save weight. Um, or I can come back on a radio or two or whatever. So it's a completely modular system and uh, that's why I built the bag at it, the way it is right now. Um, there's a few other accessories which I, I do use. I Last year I made a uh, hiking pole that's a ham radio antenna and I'll go over that in another video later on. But that's my ham radio go kit. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you later.